an organization is implementing a threat scope reduction strategy by isolating critical servers into separate network segments. What is the primary security control associated with minimizing the potential impact of a security incident? Is it A. Adaptive authentication? Is it B. Micro segmentation? Is it C. Policy driven access control? Or is it D. Risk management? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, micro-segmentation. Micro-segmentation is a robust network security strategy that involves dividing the network into smaller segments to reduce the attack surface and limit lateral movement. By isolating critical servers into separate network segments, the organization employs micro-segmentation to minimize the potential impact of a security incident. This control compartmentalizes critical assets, preventing unauthorized lateral movement and restricting access to sensitive resources. Critical servers, such as databases storing sensitive information, are placed into isolated network segments. Each segment has its own security controls and communication between segments is carefully controlled. This ensures that even if one segment is compromised, the impact is contained, reducing the overall risk. And now for the incorrect answers, adaptive authentication. Whilst adaptive authentication dynamically adjusts the level of identity verification, it is not directly associated with minimizing the impact of a security incident. Adaptive authentication is more focused on user authentication in varying contexts. Policy-driven access control is essential for overall security, but it's not the primary control associated with the described micro-segmentation strategy. Micro-segmentation focuses on network isolation, and risk management involves identifying and mitigating risks, but is a broader concept and is not the primary control emphasized in the described scenario of micro-segmentation. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, an organization is implementing a framework based on user roles and contextual attributes. What is the primary security control associated with defining and enforcing access permissions? Is it A. Threat scope reduction? Is it B. Policy administrator? Is it C. Policy driven access control? Or is it D. Implicit trust zones? You now have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is C. Policy-Driven Access Control Policy-Driven Access Control is a pivotal security measure that involves defining and enforcing access permissions based on predefined policies. In this scenario, the organization is implementing a framework where access is determined by policies aligned with user roles and contextual attributes. This control ensures that access rights are granted or denied based on specific criteria providing a granular and dynamic approach to managing permissions. The organization utilizes an Identity and Access Management, or IAM, system that enforces policies dictating access rights based on factors such as user roles, de device health, and location. For instance, a user with administrative role may have different access permissions compared to a regular employee. And now for the incorrect answers, threat scope reduction was important. Threat scope reduction involves minimizing the potential impact of a security incident, but it's not the primary control associated with policy-driven access control. It focuses on reducing the attack surface. A policy admin manages policies, but it's not the primary control highlighted in the context of enforcing access permissions. The emphasis is on control itself. And implicit trust zones are associated with the data plane, not the primary control in the context of defining the enforcing access permissions. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, an organization is conducting a risk-based approach, adjusting identity verification based on contextual factors. What is the primary security control associated with dynamically assessing the risk of a logging attempt? Is it A, adaptive authentication? Is it B, threat scope reduction? Is it C, policy engine, or is it D, subject slash system? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is A, adaptive authentication. Adaptive authentication is a security mechanism that dynamically adjusts the level of identity verification based on contextual factors. In this scenario, the organization is implementing a risk-based approach, where the authentication process adapts according to the post-perceived risk associated with a login attempt. This control enhances security by adding an extra layer of scrutiny for potential risky situations. 
For instance, if a user attempts to log in from an unfamiliar location or using an unfamiliar device, the adaptive authentication system may prompt for additional verification steps, such as multi-factor authentication. This dynamic adjustment adds a higher level of security when potential risks are identified. And now for the incorrect answers, threat scope reduction involves minimizing the potential impact of a security incident, but it's not the primary control associated with risk-based adaptive authentication. It focuses on reducing the attack surface. A policy engine enforces access, access policies, but is not the primary control highlighted in the context of dynamically assessing the risk of login attempts. The emphasis is on the adaptive authentication control. And subjects and systems refer to users and devices within the data plane and are not the primary control in the context of adaptive authentication. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, an organization is trying to reduce the attack surface and limit lateral movement. What is the primary security control associated with this strategy? Is it A, policy-driven access control? Is it B, micro-segmentation? Micro is it C, policy enforcement point? Or is it D, threat scope reduction? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, micro-segmentation. Micro-segmentation involves dividing a network into smaller, isolated segments to reduce the attack surface and limit lateral movement within the network. In this scenario, the organization is using micro-segmentation as a strategic measure to enhance security. This control ensures that even if a part of network is compromised, the lateral movement of attackers is constrained, preventing the escalation of a security incident. Critical assets such as servers hosting sensitive applications are placed in separate segments. Each segment has its own security policies and communication between segments is restricted. This isolation prevents attackers from moving freely within the network, minimizing the potential impact of a security breach. And now for the incorrect answers. Policy-driven access control, whilst important, it's not the primary security control associated with the described strategy of using micro-segmentation. Micro-segmentation focuses on network isolation. Uh, policy enforcement point enforces access policies, but is not the primary control highlighted in the context of micro-segmentation. The emphasis is on micro-segmentation control. And threat scope reduction involves minimizing the potential impact of a security incident, but is not the primary control associated with micro-segmentation. It is more focused on reducing the attack surface. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, an organization is implementing a centralized identity and access management or IAM system for defining and enforcing access policies. What is the primary security control associated with this approach? Is it A, policy engine? Is it B, policy administrator? Is it C, policy driven access control? Or is it D, adaptive authentication? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, policy-driven access control. A centralized IAM system is associated with policy-driven access control, where access and permissions are centrally defined and enforced based on predetermined policies. In this scenario, the organization is using a centralized IAM system to streamline and manage access policies for users. The IAM system acts as a central authority for defining policies governing access to resources. For instance, it may specify that users in a certain role have read-only access to a particular database. Policy-driven access control ensures consistent and centralized management of, for, uh, of access permissions. And now for the incorrect answers, policy, a policy engine enforces access policies, but is not the primary control highlighted in the context of using a centralized IAM system. The emphasis is on the policy-driven access control. A policy administrator manages policies, but is not the primary control associated with the described CMDB approach. The emphasis is on the control itself. And adaptive authentication dynamically adjusts identity verification based on contextual factors, but is not the primary control emphasized in this scenario. The emphasis is on the policy-driven access control. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, an organization is deploying a policy engine that integrates with real-time threat intelligence. What is the primary security control associated with dynamically adjusting access policies based on emerging threats? Is it A, threat scope reduction? Is it B, adaptive authentication? Is it C, policy engine? Or is it D, implicit trust zones? You now have five seconds.
And the correct answer is C, policy engine. A policy engine is a security component responsible for dynamically adjusting access policy based on predefined rules and contextual information. In this scenario, the organization is deploying a policy engine that leverages real-time threat intelligence to make informed decisions about the access permissions. The policy engine receives continuous updates from threat intelligence feeds, allowing it to identify emerging threats. Based on this information, the engine dynamically adjusts access for policies. For example, if a new malware variant is detected, the policy engine may immediately block access for devices associated with this threat. And now for the incorrect answers, threat scope reduction involves minimizing the potential impact of a security incident, but it's not the primary control associated with the policy engine. The emphasis is on dynamically adjusting access policies. Adaptive authentication dynamically adjusts identity verification, but it's not the primary highlighted control in this scenario. The emphasis is on the policy engine. And implicit trust zones are associated with the data plane, not the primary control in the context of dynamically adjusting access policies based on threats. The emphasis is on the policy engine. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, an organization is using a network access control or NAC solution at the network perimeter to check devices for compliance. What is the primary security control associated with this approach? Is it A, adaptive authentication? Is it B, policy-driven access control? Is it C, policy enforcement point? Or is it D, micro-segmentation? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is C, policy enforcement point. A NAC solution acts as a policy enforcement point, inspecting devices attempting to connect to the network and ensuring compliance with security policies before granting access. In this scenario, the organization is using a NAC solution as a critical control point for enforcing security policies at the network perimeter. When a device attempts to connect to the network, the NAC solution checks for its compliance with policies such as having up-to-date antivirus software and the latest security patches. If the device meets the criteria, the NAC solution enforces the policy and allows network access, otherwise access is denied. And now for the incorrect answers. Adaptive authentication dynamically adjusts identity verification, but it's not the primary control associated with the described NAC solution. The emphasis is on the policy enforcement point. Policy-driven access control is essential, but it's not the primary control highlighted in the context of a NAC solution. And micro-segmentation involves isolating network segments, but it's not the primary control emphasized in the context of a NAC solution. And for the next question of our exam, question number eight. And the question states, an organization is creating an inventory of devices and users using a Configuration Management Database, or CMDB, to form the basis for access decisions. What is the primary security control associated with this approach? Is it A, Implicit Trust Zones? Is it B, Subject Slash System? Is it C, Policy Administrator? Or is it D, Threat Scope Reduction? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, Subject Slash System. In the context of zero trust, subjects refer to users, devices, or applications interacting with the network. Systems encompass both user devices and the overall IT infrastructure. In this scenario, the organization is creating a comprehensive CMDB to establish an inventory of devices and users forming the basis for access decisions. The CMDB includes detailed information about each device and user roles. This information serves as the foundation for access decisions, ensuring that only authorized subjects, users, and devices interact with the systems. And now for the incorrect answers, implicit trust zones involve treating all network segments as untrusted, not the primary control highlighted in the context of a CMDB. The emphasis is on subjects and systems. A policy administrator manages policies, but is not the primary control associated with the described CMDB approach. The emphasis is on subjects and systems. And threat scope reduction involves minimizing the potential impact of a security incident, but is not the primary control emphasized in the context of a CMDB. The emphasis is on subjects and systems. And for the next question of our exam, question number nine. And the question states, an organization is utilizing a security measure which is dynamically adjusting the level of identity verification based on contextual factors. What is the primary security control associated with this dynamic approach? Is it A, policy engine? 
Is it B, threat scope reduction? Is it C, adaptive authentication? Or is it D, policy driven access control? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is C, adaptive authentication. Adaptive authentication is a security measure that dynamically adjusts the level of identity verification based on contextual factors, such as user behavior and location. In this scenario, the organization is employing adaptive authentication to enhance security by adapting the identity verification process according to the perceived risk associated with each login attempt. For instance, if a user attempts to log in from an unfamiliar location, the adaptive authentication system may prompt for additional verification steps, such as multi-factor authentication. This dynamic adjustment adds an extra layer of security when potential risks are identified. And now for incorrect answers, a policy engine dynamically adjusts access policies, but is not the primary control associated with adaptive authentication. The emphasis is on adaptive authentication. Threat scope reduction involves minimizing the potential impact of a security incident, but it's not the primary control emphasized in the context of adaptive authentication. And policy-driven access control is essential, but it's not the primary control highlighted in the context of adaptive authentication. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. But before that, ladies and gents, make sure to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. And now back to our exam. An organization is deploying a next-gen firewall, or NGFW, to enhance its security posture. What is the primary control associated with the NGFW? Is it A, Intrusion Prevention System, or IPS? Is it B, Antivirus Software? Is it C, Network Address Translation, or NAT? Or is it D, VLAN Segmentation? You now have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is A, Intrusion Prevention System, or IPS. An Intrusion Prevention System, or IPS, is a critical component of a next-generation firewall, or NGFW. It actively analyzes network traffic, identifies potential threats, and takes preventative actions to block or mitigate these threats in real time. The NGFW, with integrated IPS functionality, can detect and block malicious activities such as network-based attacks, exploits, and suspicious traffic patterns. This enhances the organization's security by proactively preventing potential security incidents. And now for the incorrect answers, whilst antivirus software is essential for endpoint protection, it is not the primary security control associated with the next generation firewall. NGFW focus on network level threat prevention. Network address translation or NAT is a technology that allows multiple devices to share a single public IP address. Whilst commonly used for security reasons, it's not the primary security control emphasized in the context of a NGFW. And VLAN segmentation is a network design technique to isolate traffic within different virtual LANs or local area networks. Although beneficial for network organizations, it's not primary security control associated with an NGFW. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you guys next time.